What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. My name is John Dawson. I am a builder, and this is the ICF Indestructible build that we are about to start doing. I'm out here shooting some lines, um, shooting some grades, some elevations, stuff like that, and I wanted to make a quick video because yesterday I had a meeting with my designer, and we kind of changed everything, okay? Um, I have some samples that I want to show you because these are some products that we're going to be using on this build. Um, but first I want to kind of go over one thing, okay? Um, and if you haven't, please like and subscribe. I am a builder that talks to you, and I don't mean this in a facetious or degrading way, but I talk to you in layman's words. I am someone who has learned through simplicity. Um, I continue to grow and learn through simplicity. Sometimes I watch builders, they get a little more technical than, than my brain enjoys, um, and I have to listen harder and pay attention harder. So I'm just gonna spell it to you out the way I like to have people spell it out to me. Maybe it works for you, maybe you're smarter than me, and you can find another video, that's totally cool. So what we're doing here is we're doing an ICF build, and we were doing an ICF footing all the way around perimeter walls. ICF is insulated concrete forms. It's an amazing, durable, str strong, and efficient way to build. We were gonna do footers around the perimeter. The ICF was gonna stack up. We were gonna have a slab on the interior, um, just your typical slab and uh, slab on grade, and then we were going to basically run traditional from there on out roof and interior walls, right? The more that we looked at the site, the more that I shot grade, I shot elevations, I realized that one, um, the soil we have here, I wish I had some, I don't wanna get my hands dirty, but I guess I can pick this up. What we have here is pretty much solid clay. You could, you, I mean, my daughters have made pots out of the clay on this very spot here. Um, that is not good soil for slab foundations, right? This means we have to scrape it. Uh, we can choose to do a couple different things. We can bring in soil, um, select fill, or we can bring in a company that will do injections where they come through with a, with a piece of equipment. They shoot rods into the ground. They inject chemicals in there, lime or whatever it is. I don't really know anything about it, but um, I know they come out and they shoot injections into the ground that stabilizes your soil so your soil doesn't have shifts. If you guys don't know this, clay, although it's pretty much concrete when it's dry, when it gets moist and then when it dries out, it expands and it contracts. It swells and then it shrinks. So for a slab foundation, you can imagine um, if you keep doing you know, this to a slab, eventually you're gonna start getting cracks. So when I was looking into what would it be to get this slab poured, I was like, this is giving me all the problems I don't want and it's not solving any problems in the long run. If you guys have seen my other video, Slab versus Pier and Beam, you know I love Pier and Beam. And when I can, I will run a Pier and Beam foundation 10 times out of 10 if I can. So I planned this whole build based on a slab foundation. Then I talked to my engineer to figure out, will this ICF build lose any of its structural integrity if I go Pier and Beam? And they were like, no, because the walls are sitting independently of your slab anyway. Your slab is just your floor, so you could do pier and beam. Now I'm on a grade here where we have an elevation change of about five and a half feet from front to back. I don't want the back of my house to be up off the ground five and a half feet, or I don't even really want it off the ground four and a half feet. Um, I'm okay with three-ish, maybe four feet, we can do some concrete steps going out. I'm okay with that. But I didn't want my house to be sitting on another high porch. I wanna be able to walk out, walk down to our future pool and not have a bunch of steps for when, you know, older people come over and don't wanna do a bunch of that step stuff. Long story short, we have completely changed the plans and we are now building an ICF home on a pier and beam foundation. Now I'm gonna give you guys the pros and cons of pier and beam and slab. Now, some of the cons of slab that I've already given you, there is a ton of soil work. There are issues, there are, are more ways for it to go wrong in my opinion, and that may just be because I'm more familiar with pier and beam. But with a slab, the soil needs to be perfect, your grading needs to be perfect, your plumbing needs to be perfect, whatever you run in your slab needs to be perfect, right? If you're putting anything in your slab, it needs to be perfect because it is a nightmare to repair anything in a slab. If you spec out your plan and your toilet is two inches too close to the shower or to the vanity, that's, that's some concrete busting, um, not fun 
stuff to do, okay? Uh, if you have plumbing issues, you're gonna have to send a scope down there, you're gonna have to find out where the issue is. If there's a crack, if there's leaking in your pipes, you're going to have to, once again, jack up your concrete, which means take up your, your interior floor and figure that out. I don't like that aspect of slabs. The other issue is, like I said, the cracking, uh, the moving of the slab if your soil isn't done properly. Um, a lot of people who do slabs, they've got it down well, so I'm not saying it's a huge issue, but if you live, I used to live in Waco. If you live in Waco, you go off to one of the cities around that area, they, they're on a fault line. So no matter how good you make the soil, you, th those foundations are messed up in 10, 15 years maximum, right? They're, they're all messed up. So there's just a lot more variables when you are setting something directly on Mother Nature herself um, versus lifting it up and having direct points that you can control a little bit more um, specifically. Uh, the other aspects of slab that I don't like, it is a hard surface to live on. If you do slabs, you want to put some pad under your flooring because slabs is, I mean, concrete is not something humans were supposed to live on. We, I mean, if you've ever worked, I worked at a grocery store for eight years. Um, standing on concrete eight hours out of the day, five days a week, uh, destroyed my back, plantar fasciitis starts kicking in, joints, ankles, lower backs, necks, everything start hurting when you're living on concrete. It isn't ideal, right? Obviously, there's things like pad and whatnot to mitigate that. But overall, you're once again adding these additional ish, these additional costs to your build if you do slab. The other aspect of slab is that if you are somewhere in cold climate, um, you're going to probably want to put radiant heating in your slab, which is going to um, warm that floor so you're not walking around on cold floors during the winter. That's another additional cost to a slab if you're in these colder climates. Um, as you can see, the list kind of starts adding up, like the concrete slab they say is more cost effective, which, you know, debatable, but I, apparently people think that, um, so I'll go with what they say. But once that slab's done, there's a lot more cost that goes into it, especially if something goes wrong, there's a significant cost that goes into repairing things that are in your slab or repairing your slab. So I didn't really want to do a slab, and now we've ex the slab and we are doing pier and beam. Now here's some of the pros of slabs, just real quick. Um, like I said, they're fairly, they're supposedly less expensive. Um, they're very durable in the sense of they're just, you're not gonna have rot, you're not gonna have th those types of issues. Um, and they're, they're pretty quick to go up, right? You pretty much have a, a crew come out and you have your floor in about a day, right? So, and that's if you're doing 3,000 or like this, a 4,000 square foot house, um, it's nice to be able to boom, the floor is done in a day let it cure, next day you're coming and you're able to walk on that sucker, right? So that's a positive. I, one more con about slab, and this is something that I've noticed personally, I don't know if this is an official thing, but I've noticed that all the homes that I've done or the homes that I've lived in that are slab have a lot higher insect issue. Um, and I've lived in some very tight homes, and I don't think it's the tight homes that cause the issue or that, that um, prevent the issue. I think it's just doorways, openings, you being on grade and that close to the soil um, I just think insects have an easier way into the home um, through doors open and stuff like that. That's just what I'm thinking, but don't take me to the bank on that. That's just my experience. Now moving on to pier and beam. Pier and beam is an amazing way to build. One of the huge pros in my book for pier and beam, I, I can lay, like this is a 4,000 square foot build. I'm probably going to do this pier and beam foundation myself uh, with maybe one other guy, maybe two other guys, right? Um, and we'll be able to knock it out no problem, right? The second thing that I love about pier and beam is that you're running piers down into your ground. So you can't pour a slab 20 feet deep, right? You can have piers under your slab to support your slab and add some air gaps in your slab to mitigate the, the shifting and the cracking of that slab, additional cost. With pier and beam, skip the slab. All you're doing is you're sending down these piers, whether you have to go down nine or 10 feet, whether you have to go down 20 feet, you're selecting specific locations where your load is going to be bearing. And those locations, you'll drill straight down to the bedrock, which removes the variable of all the soil around you. I won't have to move any of this clay. I will just dig down until I no longer am hitting clay, pour my footings, have my piers come up, and I'm good to go. So I have a lot more control over how my home will function over decades because I know that these individual spots where the load is going, it is hitting bedrock and that bedrock's not going anywhere. So that's a huge bonus with that. Another bonus with pier and beam foundations is that you have the ability to run mechanicals through your crawl space, right? So I'm most likely going to be rolling out 
um, eye joists for my floor joists, which means I can run mechanicals through those webs and I can run electrical, I can run plumbing, um, I can run HVAC. I'm going to actually probably run um, an HVAC into or a, a vent into the crawl space to have a conditioned crawl space. Um, I have control to do that. If my toilet's off two inches, I can move that toilet two inches, no problems, minimal time, almost next, next to no cost to move that over. I'm good to go, I'm golden, right? Those are huge things. If I have a clog, if I have a break in a pipe, if I have any issues with my, my mechanicals under my floor, I can go under there and fix those immediately nine times, I would say nine, I would, you know what, to be honest, a hundred times out of a hundred, I'm able to fix those problems myself. I don't have to tear up my floor. I don't have to mud jack. I don't have to do any of those things to fix my floor. If there's a squeak in the floor, I can check it. I can screw it down. I can secure it, whatever those are. I can fix those things at little to no cost. Um, again, the opposite of slab, pier and beam, a lot more forgiving on your joints, a lot more forgiving on your back, a lot more forgiving in general um, in your home. Those are some really awesome aspects of pier and beam. Um, I think that's kind of the biggest thing that I wanted to cover with the pros of pier and beam. Um, they're just a great, a great way to build um, and I just, I just like them. The cons of a pier and beam foundation and this is very minimal because nowadays, and I'll show you the product that I'm gonna be using here in a minute. Nowadays, we have such strong engineered uh, floor joists and, and decking that we don't come run into these issues as much as before when we were using dimensional lumber. But if you wanna do some really heavy tile or stone on your floor, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you've calculated that into your deflection rating and that you're not putting a really heavy stone on something that you didn't account for because that will give that floor some give. You're gonna get grout cracks, you're gonna get uh, stone cracks, tile's gonna crack. If you have that give under those solid surface like porcelain tile type of floor products, right? So that, that's a con unless you plan for it in advance, which really isn't too bad, or you just beef up your entire foundation to be prepared for whatever you might throw in there down the road, which is what I'm gonna be doing in my case. Um, the other aspect or the con of pier and beam is it is more susceptible to rot and termites, right? Termites aren't eating your concrete slab. They will eat your wood pier and beam foundation. Um, again, there's precautions that you can take to avoid that. Um, most of the time now, again, just like with slab, if you prepare the soil right, you shouldn't have any problems. If you prepare your pier and beam foundation properly, you shouldn't have any problems. Um, I always encourage people, if because of the technology we have, if you're building a pier and beam foundation, go ahead and spend the extra however much, which it's not significant, I would say maybe a couple thousand at, at most, to condition that crawl space, get a nice vapor barrier. I recommend Stego, they're a great, great product. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. Get a good vapor barrier down there. Um, have some gravel, however your engineer specs that out. Spend some time making that crawl space really nice and that will eliminate most all of the cons of these pyramid beam foundations when it comes to termites, rot, um, mold, and stuff like that. So I am going with the pyramid beam foundation because of all those things I explained, right? You can see in my personal view, and you guys might have a different opinion, in my personal view, I have so many problems that are being presented with a slab and I have so many problems being solved with a pier and beam foundation. That to me is why we've changed this entire design to go with pier and beam. Now the way I'm gonna do this, um, and I'm not sure, I'm gonna check with the ICF company that I'm working with to see if this is something that they have spec'd out for their blocks. Um, if you've seen ICF, they have a brick ledge block, which is usually turned to the outside for your brick ledge. If you're doing brick or stone or something like that, it's a concrete ledge that you pour into your, that you attach to your, your block and that kicks out and gives you a ledge and then you can set your brick on there and your brick ties will go up that wall and you have a brick ledge. I'm wanting to flip that brick ledge to the interior of my home and use that as a bearing point for my floor joists. So as I lay out this home, once I get that first course perfect, I run my second course, right? And we're, we're level. I run my third course with the black brick edge facing interior and then I have a bearance point around the entire perimeter of my build to set all of my floor joists on. And then I have my, my piers that come through the middle and I have my whatever else I need in, in load bearing aspects, which are gonna be piers in some way. My load bearing columns that are going up to my ridge, those will be set in a pier all the way down with the proper footing. And I'm, I roll that floor out 
I deck that floor and I have a solid floor that's tied into my ICF brick walls or my ICF concrete walls and I'm good to go. So that's really exciting. I'm really excited to show you guys that detail again. Subscribe, like this video, ring the bell so you get notified as I update you. We are getting ready to actually start putting stuff together here. Um, so it's really exciting. I appreciate you guys. Much love. Have a good one.